Let's introduce compass turns as you'd see them on a training flight. The traditional magnetic compass has built-in errors due to dip, the effect banking the airplane has due to the angle of magnetic fields. We're starting on a heading of 330 degrees. The compass is in agreement with the directional gyro. We're about to enter a left turn. Have a look at the turn coordinator for a second. There are hashes reading left and right. Let's also think of the L and R as standing for lower and raise. Lower the heading in a left turn, so as we turn, we expect to see our heading lower from 330. It does on the directional gyro, but notice the compass swings the other way. The heading raises initially. This is magnetic dip. As we stay in the turn, the compass catches up with our heading, and as we turn through due west, the directional gyro and compass are once again in agreement. Magnetic dip doesn't affect a banked aircraft when pointed west or east. We're in a standard rate with the turn coordinator wing on that left hash. A full 360 degree circle will take two minutes. As we keep the turn going, notice the compass and the DG start to disagree again. The compass reaches south before our DG, which reflects our actual heading, gets there. If we want to roll out on a south heading, we'll need to let the compass overshoot south by about 20 or 30 degrees. The amount of overshoot actually depends on what latitude we're at on Earth, and is reversed on the southern hemisphere. Now, because a standard rate turn moves the aircraft in a full circle in two minutes, we can use timing to turn any other amount. If we want to make a 180 degree turn, half a circle, it'll take one minute. If we watch the clock when we begin the turn, we can tell after one minute is up that we've made a full 180. So now we can cover up the DG. We know that the compass isn't correctly showing heading until we actually reach east on it. East and west headings don't have magnetic dip errors. When we rolled out on a south heading, we had to overshoot it on the compass. For a north heading, we'll need to undershoot. So when the compass reads about 30 degrees, we'll roll out as our minute expires to hit our due north heading. The practice of undershooting the north heading and overshooting the south heading gives us the memory aid UNOS, UNOS, undershoot north, overshoot south. Timed turns can be a huge help when flying without reference to the directional gyro. You'll have to demonstrate it on the check ride with these maneuvers, but you'll also need to be able to maneuver shooting an approach when the vacuum system fails. Even with the GPS as a backup, time turns can help you tell when to start and stop a turn to get a desired heading change. Let's say here we want to turn from a north heading to a 045 heading. 45 degrees is one eighth of a full circle. One eighth of two minutes is 15 seconds. We're going from a heading of basically zero to 045 degrees. We need to raise our heading, so use the R, right hash mark, and turn for 15 seconds. Ignore what the compass is showing you. We're going to focus on the timer. At 15 seconds, we roll out and the compass settles on about 45 degrees. The sim is a great place to practice compass turns and timing since it demonstrates dip errors really well. And flight insight ground schools are a great way to get as proficient as possible in all your flying. Check them out at our site linked here or in the description today.